forever and gone. Things fade away, things pass, time pass, God, but your love will never fade away. We had a good time. I lost my voice. Everybody lost their voice, but it's yeah. all worth it. Right? Bye. 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 See you guys next week, Cap. <laughs> Very 
interesting here like uh, kita tuh ngerasa banget like one whole big family what it feels like and how the Holy Spirit is actually changing us Mantap. How about you guys? Very fun Very fun? Uh, I feel touched by the Holy Spirit and uh, yeah I got a lot of new friends That's good It's inspiring Amazing <laughs> Amazing, how amazing? <laughs> Undescribable. Biasa, sangat luar biasa, biasa membangun uh, karakter satu sama aku, lain. Tahun depan harus lebih seru lagi. Mantap. Sama. Let's get this party started. Is the best. Woo! Mantap. Amazing. Sangat memberkati. Oke, okay, how, 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 how? Sangat disentuh. Iya, yeah, asli. Okay. Okay. Nangis gue, gue crying. More than what I expect. It taught me that I have to be more appreciative of my friends. And I was so touched the fact that my friends were like praising, and they were like raising their hands and singing, and I was like. That's enough for me, you know. Very good. My first youth camp. Standard. Lewat semua. Lewat. Oh, it feels great. I was touched last night and was like, man, next year I'm definitely coming here again. Okay, so what do you gonna say about to your friends that are uh, missing, missing out? Yeah, you're missing out, man. You should, you should have come, man. Like, wow. It's amazing. Lebih gampang bersosialisasi sekarang. Really. Kalau dulu kan sering malu-malu nih kalau ketemu orang yang nggak kenal gitu kan, nggak mm. bisa say hello gitu. Sekarang kayak bisa kenalan gitu, enak gitu. Ya. That's And good. Like there's a lot of friends. That's so, to be close to God. Be grateful with the things that you have right now, because everybody got their own problems, right? And so like we should just pray to God and have what we have right now. Hi, 316. So on the behalf of 316 Pastoral Team and all the church leadership we apologize again due to the high case of positive COVID-19 uh, as a church as a community we have decided that uh, for some reasons there will be some adjustment in the way we do our service so for the next couple of weeks if you notice something different in, in uh, that is different with our normal regular service on behalf of 316 pastoral team and, and church leadership We do apologize because of we have to take some precaution. So if you see any adjustment on the service, uh, don't worry. It's still still us, the same community, the same church, and the same Jesus. But the way we package our service could be different. Because again, we have to take some precaution action due to a positive COVID-19 case. And as a, as a, as a lead as a, for the 316, I want to make sure the safety of all the volunteers. But at the same time, We're also doing our best, so all of you can still experience the same service. But I surely believe, no matter the style of our worship, no matter how we run our service, but He is still the same God. We still can have that encounter moment and we still can enjoy the present. So for all 316, let's keep support our government. And, and as soon as the condition is back to normal, and we'll probably try our best to get back and run our normal service. So again, I apologize, but at this very moment, uh, we need also to prioritize safety and the health of our volunteer. But for all the members and, and the viewers, please stay with us because it's still the same service, the same God, and the same community. So in the next moment, we are going to enjoy the praise and worship followed by the sermon. Please stay and keep joining our service. God bless you. Praise and worship, so I want to invite everyone to stand up and let's give our best for God. I'm so seen in full my lining. I saw darkness run for cover.
sons and daughters God with blood and wash and water Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father Our God will finish what He started still stand in our life God and when we believe that you are such a great God you're such a beautiful God Still in your hands, this 
Hi, all 316 uh, members, volunteer, and, and thank you for joining our service today. Uh, just, just before we start our service, let's just uh, pray one more time. Father God, we give you thanks for this beautiful time that you allow us to, to enjoy your presence. Uh, Father God, in a moment, if we would like to listen to the Word of God, Holy Spirit just speaks to, to the very one of us. Uh, we're ready to listen to the Word of God. We are, we, are, we are excited to learn something new today. Father God, we are more than ready. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody who believes, shout, Amen. All right, so any one of you excited to listen to the Word of God? Again, I'm so excited. And especially today, and especially today, we are going to discuss about experiencing Jesus. Yeah, maybe you 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 probably uh, I've been I've been I've been become a Christ follower for more than five years, six years, ten years. But this this is it. I know I know how to experience Jesus. I know, but but I want to tell you today. Experience Jesus is, is more than just your first personal encounter with God. Yeah, and today for the next uh, 20, 30 minutes, we are going to discuss about experiencing Jesus. And I believe after this sermon or throughout this month, you will see how your experience with Jesus actually can bring impact to other people. Just throughout your, your experience with Jesus, it's not only grow or strengthen your relationship with God, but it also can bless and impact so many other people around you. It will impact your family, your community. When we talk about experience Jesus, I want to begin by saying this, that our God is a personal God. If you read Bible carefully, there are a lot of Bible character mentioned uh, in the Bible, uh, from the Old Testament and the New Testament. Then if you notice, if you read it carefully, the way Jesus met each Bible character, may not be the same. The way Jesus met with Moses is not the same when the way Jesus appoint Joshua. And the way Jesus approach and change Apostle Paul life is, 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 is not the same with the way Jesus met other Bible character and change their life. What I can tell you is, is our Jesus is a personal God. The way that God connect with you and me might be different. But yet, He is still the same God. He is still the same Jesus. The way Jesus changed my life could be different with the way Jesus changed your life. But I bring into you the, the good news today. But He is still the same Jesus. Jesus that changed my life is the same Jesus that will or about to change your life. And our God is a personal God. He knows exactly the way how to touch and change your life. Jesus, our Jesus not doing like a formula. This is the way I want to connect with and change your life. No, no. Our God is very relevant with, with, with all of us. Our God knows our condition and He knows the best way to touch and change your life. The method might be different. The way could be different. But yet, it is still the same Jesus. So, don't, don't, don't like many of us, I, wa, I, wa, I want to get touched by, by you, God, by, by this method. I want to cry in your presence. But that's not probably the way Jesus wants to change your life. The method might be different, but it is still the same Jesus. I mean, so when, when it comes to experiencing Jesus, we should know that our God is a personal God. We cannot limit how can God save your life. He has His own way to touch and change your life. But yet, it is still the same Jesus. And the second point that when, 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 when it comes to talk about experiencing Jesus, what I can tell you is, is experience Jesus is something personal. When I say I experience Jesus, it's something that personal to me. Again, it might not be the same with you. When it comes to personal, everything is different. I give you an example. My wife is a dog lover. So everything about dog, uh, everything about dog, I'm sorry, I apologize. Everything about dog is becomes personal to her. So one day if, if he's scrolling on her Instagram and, and he and she saw an uh, Instagram feed about dog, let's say there is a tiny dog and and then it feels emotional for her because when it comes to dog, it's personal. To her. 
But for my mom, she quote unquote, she, she, she hate or she doesn't like a, a pet, a dog. So when, when, when we show a dog picture, she will say her emotion will be just flat. Yeah, yeah. Mom, this dog is, is so funny, right? It's a small, fluffy. My wife would say like, uh, oh, it's so funny, fluffy. But then when, when we show this, this dog, this, this, this a cute, fluffy dog to my mom, then my mom would say just a flat face. Because dog does not bring intention to my mom. So when we said experiencing Jesus is something personal, if you truly has experienced Jesus in your life, it should be mean something to you. When we talk about dog lover, you know, the, the, the thing that's just recently happening, uh, BTS army, you know, could be very personal. When we say it about, about experience something, it, it's very personal. It speaks differently to, to, to different individual. It could be subjective to some extent. It could be very emotional to you, but, but for other person, it's just a flat reaction, flat emotion. But what I can tell you is, yes, experiencing Jesus is something personal. I have experienced Jesus, and I encourage you, you and everyone who just joined the service to experience Jesus personally. But when we talk about experiencing Jesus, the experience is real. It is something that real. Yes, experiencing something could be very personal, could be different, but, but when we say experiencing Jesus, the experience is real. The experience when we're following Christ, when we meet Jesus, when we are caught in His presence, the experience is real. I give you an illustration like this. Have you ever in a, like watch a 4D, uh, uh, a 4D uh, cinema? You know, if, if you're in a 4D cinema, the experience is so real. You could feel your change moving left and right. You could feel all sometimes a, a, a splash of water and you just, you just can feel it looks like real. When we talk about 4D experience, the movie, the cinema could be different, but the experience is real. You, ha you watch movie A, movie B, movie C, movie D, and so on. If you watch in the 4D, it gives you different experience. For to, to some reasons, like, like you kind of, you kind of one of the actor in the movie. You feel that. Regardless all the, 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 the title of the movie, the title of the scene, the experience is real. And same, when it comes with following Christ, yes, the experience could be personal. But that experience is real. And let me tell you the truth is that He came down from heaven just to save you and me. And that experience is real. Yes, personally, you have so many ways to get your first encounter with Jesus. But no matter what it is, the experience is always real. Amen? He knows who you are. So today, He knows who you are. He knows how do you feel. Even just right now, when you tune in and, and, and listen to the service, He knows how do you feel. He knows where you are. Exactly He knows where you are, spiritually where you are. He knows. But He wants to meet you where you are you are and that's the truth and that makes our experience with god it is something real it's not just about personal judgment subjective opinion but when it comes to experiencing jesus the experience is real so today i encourage you probably you have you you you, you know what i feel when i say the experience is real but for those of you Maybe that is the reason why you join our service today or, or, or it's just like a couple of weeks ago and you plan to, to plant it in this community. Just maybe I know. Maybe God wants to meet you personally. God want to share, well, God wanna, wanna share with you that, hey, the experience is following me is something that is real. If you listen 
the goodness of God from other people. Today, God is saying, I want to make it real to you as well. If you want to feel the love of God, because you've never probably feel the love of God, the true love of God, maybe you've just listened from, from somebody else. I want to tell you today, maybe this is the time for you to feel the love of God. And you have the real experience of following Christ. And if you have that real experience, no matter what happened in your life, you will always enjoy your journey of relationship with our God, with Jesus Christ. Amen. And today, I want to ask to learn about three things. Like what I want to say is this, there is a power of making it personal. There is a power when you have a personal relationship with God. There is a power. Maybe you say, it's just my personal call. It's, it's, it's nothing, probably just one day, five minutes, I just have my personal time with my God. But I want to I wanna tell you there is a power even in your personal relationship with your God. I, I, I'm not, in this moment, I, I no longer serve in God. I no longer become a volunteer because everyone is, is conducted online. I used to be an usher. I used to be a musician. I used to be a singer, but no longer. But do I still have power? The answer is yes, because there is power in your relationship with your God, in your personal relationship with God. And when you experience God, the experience is real. And today, I want to I wanna take us to learn from this, uh, the uh, very classic story in the Bible. It's about a conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan. Yeah, it's a very long uh, story. Uh, it's taken from the John uh, chapter 4. <clears throat> Even first one until like almost first 45. It's a very long story, long first to cover. And I'm very sure you should know the story of a conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. But today, I want to remind us, there is power in our personal relationship with God. And, then, and we should know, even within our personal relationship with God, it can bless so many other people. Yeah? So let me begin by thanking you, by thank you to John 4, verse 39. I read it aloud to you. Many of the Samaritans from their town believe in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So what happened is, after a series of conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman, what happened is, the Samaritan woman went back to her place and he began to share her personal testimony with God. And the Bible said, many believer, many believe on God because of this woman personal testimony. So there is power on a personal testimony. The power of a personal testimony. We'll never imagine our personal testimony with God can bless so many people and even it could lead to so many believers. Your testimony might not save people directly right away, but it helps to lead people to the source. Obviously, when, 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 we, do a, when, when we share our testimony, the source should be Jesus. And when we share that testimony, when we share about that Jesus, it might not save people right away, but it helps people to lead these people to the sort of our testimony, which is Jesus. So there is power of your personal testimony. If for those of you who, who have who have that personal testimony, share it to other people. Because there is power in your personal testimony. But even if you don't have that, that testimony with Christ, it's okay. One day the time will come. I know. I'm very sure the time will come where, 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 where you will experience His testimony, His love, His goodness. But the next is we need to share it to other people. Because there is power 
in a personal testimony. The Bible clearly said on the verse 39, many of the Samaritans from the town believe in him because of this Samaritan woman testimony. Amen. So there is power, the power of personal testimony. And I'll continue with verse 40 and 41. <clears throat> Bible said, So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more become believers. When it comes to your relationship with God, testimony will not, will, will not stop there. The next level of testimony is an encounter with God. The Bible clearly said on the first 39, yes, because of the testimony, many believers came from that town. But it doesn't stop there. This group of people, they just doesn't want to, to listen by the testimony, but they also want to encounter Jesus. They urge, they force, they ask Jesus to stay. And this is my God. Our God loves an encounter. If you really want to encounter Him, if you urge, if you force yourself to meet and encounter Jesus, Jesus will stay. Bible said, He stayed for two days. If you really want to encounter Jesus, He will stay and meet where you are. In the Bible, Jesus said, okay, you want to with me? You want to you wanna, you wanna stay with me? Okay, go and meet me in this place. But Jesus said, wherever you are, I will stay. And God, Jesus stayed for two days. And after this encounter, the Bible even clearly said, many more believers. Yes, your testimony can bring many believers, but your encounter with God, even it could bring many more believers. Because there is power in a personal encounter. The power of a personal encounter. Jesus stays. He loves personal encounter. So today maybe you said, yeah, I, 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 I know his testimony, but, but I want to encounter him. And this is the right time. Because the Bible clearly said, he stayed for two days. Jesus loves personal encounter. And he will meet you where you are. The second thing we learn about the power of personal encounter. Your encounter with Jesus, just one encounter with Jesus, will change all your life. One encounter is more than enough. And Jesus loves that personal encounter moments. Amen? So when it comes to experience Jesus, there is power in your personal testimony. So never underestimate your personal relationship with God because there is power in your personal testimony. And also there is power in a personal encounter because Jesus loves an encounter moments. And the third thing that we are going to learn today, John 4 verse 42. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. This group of people initially knows Jesus because of listening to this woman's testimony. But this group of people, this group of people, they take another step. They want to have a real encounter with Jesus. And Jesus loves that encounter moment. Jesus stay for another two days just to be there and have that real encounter moment with this group of people. And ultimately, this group of people said, because of this, now I confess, now I say, now I know, I know Jesus is no longer based on what I heard from your testimony, but I know my Jesus because I truly experienced Him. The power of a personal confession. Bible said, if you confess with your 
mouth and heart that Jesus is our Savior. Yes, you have heard so many testimony or you have, you have shared so many testimony. Yes, you probably have encountered God. But the next step is you have to confess that surely Jesus is your Savior. And that's the ultimate goal of experiencing Christ. I want you and me, we experience Christ, we know Christ. It's no longer based on what other people said. But surely, truly, it's based on your personal experience with your God. You could probably be like this person, this group of people. Now I know. I no longer know Christ based on what I heard, but because of what I feel when I connect with Him. The ultimate goal is where we know Jesus not based on what other people said, but based on what we experience because of the power of a personal confession. Never underestimate the power of your personal time with God. It is the beginning of everything and many more to come. Testimony, your personal testimony. Go, take that moment. Go and chase your personal encounter with God. But doesn't stop there. Go and chase your personal confession with God where you will feel Jesus is no longer based on what other people said about Him. If one time you heard God is so good, one day you will also will feel, you will experience the good of, us, of God. No longer based on what other people said, but because you, you really experienced the goodness of God in your life. So today, I want to close my sermon. Just maybe, I want to take that experience with God. I want to encounter Jesus. I bring you the good news today. Go and meet Him because our God loves encounter moment. I want to go deeper into in that personal confession where I can confess that God is my Savior and I can fail Him no longer based on what other people say. I'm bringing out you the good news today. This is the time for you. You can confess that God is your Savior and you will feel Jesus. It's no longer based on what other people said about Jesus. <clears throat> the Bible said on Psalm, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. <clears throat> taste and see that the Lord is good. You will taste the goodness of God. You will, personally, you will taste and see. And it will no longer based on what other people said. It will no longer based on other people's testimony. It's because you're personally, you taste and see that the Lord is good. And that's the ultimate goal for us as a believer. Because we want to have that personal testimony. Because we want to have to get that personal encounter. And beyond that, we want to have that personal confession where we can confess. God is my savior. And I feel I connect with God. It's no longer based on what other people said. It's truly because based on the real experience that I have with my own God. I'm closing my sermon today. Probably throughout the sermon, uh, Kojuan, God speaks to me. God touched my life. Yes, I've been following Christ for many years, but, but I, don't, I don't feel that I have that, you know, that real encounter with God. Or oh, that confession moment where I can confess God is so good. Or oh, even I don't, I don't have so many experience when it comes to testimony. I want to have that testimony and share it to other people. What I can tell you is this is the right time. I always believed that everything happens for a reason. And even if you join today's service, I'm very sure there is a reason. I don't believe in a coincidence. Everything happens for a reason. Because everything that happens... It's always there is a reason. So today, if you, wanna, if you said, Go, John, I really want to have that encounter moment. I want to have that, that, that confession moment where I can confess personally. I can testify about the goodness of God. Maybe you've been wondering, I want to welcome that, that opportunity, that, that moment. And today, I know, very, I, I know very sure this is the time for you. And if you really want to encounter and experience Jesus in your life, so you can follow my prayer after me. And wherever you are, and I just hope this sermon 
bless your life as much as this sermon blessed me and I hope that this will bless you. And even I, I personally, I pray to God, God, I want to keep that, that personal testimony moment with you. I want to I wanna maintain that, that encounter moment with God. And I want to confess with my own mouth that surely you are my savior. And I feel you no longer based on what other people said about Jesus. So let's pray together. Father God, uh, we, we saw thanks that we have an awesome God who really loves an encounter moment. So it's God, today, many of us, or even all of us, we want to have that encounter moment with you. And I believe in this moment, you will change and you will touch our life. Yes, you are a personal God. The way you speak or the way you touch each and every one life could be different, but I surely believe you are still the same Jesus. As a church, God, we want to have that encounter moment so we can confess that surely, God, you are our Savior. And for those of people who really want to encounter Jesus, you can repeat the prayer after me. Father God, today, as an individual, I would like to have a personal encounter with you, God. God, I invite you to come to my life. I invite you to be the Savior of my life. And from today, I believe that I will have Jesus in my heart. I will no longer be the same person because of we have you in my life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody who believes, shout, Amen. To all of 316 Big Family, welcome home. So our home is going to be back on site. We are going to have our on-site service starting next week. Sunday, 15th of May, Topaz Room, 9 a.m. Due to limited capacity and for your safety and also for all the uh, volunteer safety, so we probably need your help to pre-register prior to joining our service. You can uh, download and log in into the GBPRJ apps and you have all the information there to join and to pre-register. So again, I'll be there next week to meet each and every one of you. So mark your calendar. Sunday, 15 May, 9 a.m., Topaz Room. I will be there to meet you. So see you next Sunday and welcome home. This is my test.